Scientists in Beijing have made monkeys age backwards. They injected them with genetically engineered human stem cells and watched their brains thicken, bones strengthen, ovaries revive, immune systems strengthen, and their guitar playing skills. Mwah. Okay, I made that last one up, but this is maybe the most exciting study to come out in the last ever. And it raises a lot of questions like, how exactly was this age reversal achieved? Do these gene hacked cells represent the first true anti-aging therapy for humans? Are we in a longevity arms race with China or monkeys? Or is this just Planet of the Apes Botox edition? Welcome to Longevity Science News, I'm Emmett Short. This video is sponsored by the Hume Body Pod. More on that later, but if you want a discount on the full body scanner that I've been using to track muscle mass, fat percentage, heart health markers, and metabolic age, check the link in the description. Today, a primate study in cell claims systemic age reversal using gene-enhanced stem cells called senescent resistant mesenchymal progenitor cells, that's SRCs for short, and everybody is talking about this on social media. Even the top G of not dying, Brian Johnson, posted a thread explaining the study saying, researchers engineered human embryonic stem cells, HESCs, with a modified FOXO3 gene to resist degradation. These HSCs were then differentiated into senescent resistant mesenchymal progenitor cells, SRCs. The monkeys injected with the SRCs demonstrated significant rejuvenation, reversed brain atrophy, blood senescence, inflammation, and oxidative stress. On average, this corresponded to an estimated three to five years of biological age reversal across 54% of tissues. So scaled cautiously to humans, this may approximate around nine to 15 years of rejuvenation. Okay, let's just round it to say about half your body gets about 10 years younger. More on what parts of the body responded best a little later, but I mean, right away, this is amazing. So let's talk about this FOXO3 gene. FOXO3 is part of the FOXO family of transcription factors. So genes that act like master regulators. Population studies have linked certain FOXO3 variants to exceptionally long human lifespans. So FOXO3 normally fits between the cell's nucleus and the cytoplasm. Now in aged cells, it spends less time in the nucleus, meaning fewer protective genes are turned on. So the scientists behind this study inserted specific mutations into the FOXO3 gene, and these tweaks prevent FOXO3 from being shoved out of the nucleus, so it's able to stay in there, keeping the stress response genes humming along. Essentially, they built a FOXO3 super soldier that never leaves the command center. In the lab, these gene edited cells showed all the hallmarks of youth, less senescence, longer telomeres, more stable heterochromatin, which means stable genes, and lower secretion of inflammatory factors. Additionally, these SRCs pumped out exosomes enriched with antioxidants, anti-inflammatory molecules, and metabolites like spermine, which is known to delay brain aging in mice. These exosomes reduce inflammatory markers like IL-6 and TNF-A, and they lower DNA damage signals and rejuvenate immune cells. In fact, the study showed that injecting SRC-derived exosomes alone in the mice could slow transcriptonomic aging across multiple organs. So the SRCs themselves though, are like a really inspiring coach, right? He's calling the plays and sending the right messages in the form of exosomes out to the players who are the other cells so that they can perform better. Now, importantly, these FOXO3 boosted SRCs resisted oxidative and DNA degradation and didn't form tumors when transplanted. In other words, they're robust, resilient, and safe enough for a primate trial. So let's talk about these monkeys. The monkeys were 19 to 23 years old, which translates to about 60 to 70 year old humans. So each monkey was injected intravenously with either saline as a control, standard wild type mesenchymal pro progenitor cells, WTCs, which are unmodified stem cells serving as a baseline comparison, or 
the star therapy, the FOXO3 enhanced senescent resistant cells, the monkey's got a dose of 2 million cells per kilogram of body weight per infusion. So every two weeks for 44 weeks, which equates to roughly 15 million cells per injection and basically about 200 to 300, depending on body weight, million stem cells total. For a little perspective, I'll tell you this. I went down to Tijuana and I got some stem cells for my shoulder and for my hand injury. And I also got about 130 million intravenous stem cells. And they told us the recommended max out of intravenous stem cells in one sitting was about 180 million, depending on body weight. And this falls directly in line with the 2 million cells per kilogram ratio used in the monkey study. The difference is I paid a lot of money to get it once and the monkeys got it for free for every two weeks for almost a year with the souped up cells. So in case you're wondering what might happen if you just jacked up the number of cells to some wild level, apparently it would run the risk of potential immune rejection or allergic reactions due to the high cell load an increased risk of tumor formation if cells proliferated uncontrollably, and the possibility of microemboli, which is blockages in blood vessels, and from basically from the cell clumping during infusion, just too many. So this two million per kilogram of body weight seems to be about the highest safe level. These monkeys tolerated this treatment with no fever, no immune rejection, or metabolic issues or tumors. So think about that. They injected gene edited human cells into monkeys for almost a year and they were totally fine. So that alone is a big deal. It means we're talking about a therapy that might actually be safe enough to test in humans. During the study, the monkeys underwent a battery of tests, blood tests, MRIs, CT scans, cognitive puzzles to assess how their organs, bones, and brains responded over time. The researchers weren't just looking for superficial changes. They wanted to see whether biological age markers actually moved in the right direction. Speaking of tracking biomarkers related to age, this is a perfect time to introduce our sponsor, the Hume Body Pod. In 30 seconds, it measures 45 plus metrics at 98% DEXA accuracy. Body fat, muscle mass, visceral fat, bone density, hydration, BMR, BMI, protein, heart variability, and more. It can be very motivating to see those changes represented in data. Also, let's say you're spending a lot of money on something like peptides. You wanna know those things are working. It syncs via Bluetooth to the Hume Health app, integrating with Apple Health, Fitbit, or Garmin. And a premium subscription adds AI coaching and a nutrition plan. This is far more than just a scale. It's a deep insight ecosystem. You can get a massive discount on this by using my link down below and the code longevity, which actually stacks with Hume's current sale for up to 50% off. That deal is only valid for seven days, so act fast. And if you're in the US, it's also HSA, FSA eligible. So you might actually get it covered for free by your health insurance. And now back to the episode. First up, the brain. So after 44 weeks, monkeys infused with SRCs performed significantly better on memory tasks compared to those given saline or WTCs. MRI analyses revealed restored cortical thickness and volume with the frontal and parietal lobes regaining youthful structure. Diffusion and functional MRI showed improved connectivity in the hippocampus and other memory critical regions. In other words, these monkeys brains started looking younger, both functionally and structurally. Okay, so bones and muscles. Micro CT imaging demonstrated that SRC treated monkeys experienced less age related bone loss and better preservation of bone structure. Serum markers of bone formation improved, skeletal muscle also benefited, transcriptomic age decreased by roughly 4.9 years in SRC treated muscle versus 3.5 years with the wild type cells. Now it's interesting though, that even the bi-weekly administration of the regular wild type stem cells also had a pretty great effect as well. 3.5 years age reversal, amazing. And so these improvements aren't just cosmetic. I mean, stronger bones means fewer fractures and better mobility, critical components of healthy aging. The transcriptomic and DNA methylation clocks told an even more dramatic story across 61 tissues from 10 organ systems, 
SRC treatment reduced biological age by 3.4 years on average in 54% of tissues, whereas the wild-type cells achieved 2.8 years across only 31% of tissues. I mean, still good, but not as good as the SRCs. Now, standout tissues included skin, it was negative 5.6 years versus 4.4 years with the WTCs. Lung, negative 4.1 versus 3.3. Skeletal muscle, negative 4.9 versus negative 3.2. Spleen, negative 2.6 versus negative 1.9. And the hippocampus, negative 2 versus negative 1.5. Now, on top of that, immune function improved. Peripheral blood mononuclear cells reversed age-related gene programs upregulating pathways involved in DNA repair and autophagy, while downregulating pro-senescence and inflammatory genes. Plasma cytokines like IL-6 and TNFA dropped, and biomarkers of neuroinflammation such as CHIT1 also declined. Your immune system is essentially hitting the reset button. And here's where it gets even crazier, SRCs rejuvenated reproductive organs. The study found the largest biological age reversal in the ovaries, around negative 4.5 years, with granulosa cells showing more than six years of reversal. That's not just a modest tweak, it's a full makeover. Tissues in the brain, fallopian tubes, and colon also showed age reversal beyond what the WTCs achieved. I mean, it's like the monkeys visited a yoga retreat, a gym, and a fertility clinic, all with an IV drip. Okay, but time to pump the brakes, right? As amazing as these results are, we need to talk about the fine print. So while the monkeys did not develop tumors or immune reaction over the 44-week study, we really don't know what happens over years or decades, because keep in mind, this wasn't a one-time treatment. This was bi-weekly infusions for 44 weeks. And remember, this study did also show a lot of age reversal with just the wild-type cells, the type of cells that I got when I went to Tijuana. I mean, technically, you could recreate this study on yourself with just wild-type cells. You could head down to Tijuana every two weeks and max out your IV stem cells at CPI, where I went. But doing that for the better part of a year would cost you about half a million dollars. <laughs> so, yeah, hey, if I was Elon, I might do it. Or I might wait until these FOXO3 SRCs get approved. But even with FOXO3's safety track record, any gene-edited cell therapy carries a theoretical risk of genomic instability or cancer. So long-term follow-up studies are essential. Also, monkeys are not humans. A three to five-year-old biological age reversal in monkeys, yeah, it might translate to nine to 15 years in humans, but that's a huge assumption. Humans' immune systems, reproductive biology, and social factors have much different variables. We also need to understand the biodistribution of the SRCs, like where do these cells go, how long do they survive, and do exosomes alone do the job? And of course, you know, the naysayers, they're gonna cry foul whining about costs, insurance coverage, or some privilege gap widening with this SRC therapy, but come on. Groundbreaking tech like this is always pricey at first, and actually it's a good thing. Early adopters, those bold visionaries with the cash to burn, they're going to step up first, be the guinea pigs, and fund the revolution because, you know, they're the ones that are paying attention. They get it. And without them, a lot of these technologies wouldn't even get to the public. And some people are going to say, where are we going to get all these cells? But the reality of that is these things are often, most often, thrown away. And they can also be proliferated in the lab. So I don't see that really being a problem either. So I think this is really promising. I mean, for decades, longevity science has chased the dream of a simple pill or injection or genetic tweak that could make us younger, measurably. And reality, as always, is much messier. Aging is driven by dozens of intertwined processes, stem cell exhaustion, DNA damage, mitochondrial decline, immune dysregulation, and more. But FOXO3 enhanced stem cell therapy actually is a huge leap in this direction because it doesn't just target one pathway. It addresses multiple mechanisms simultaneously. 
by boosting stress resistance, minimizing senescence, and flooding tissues with youthful exosomes. SRCs appear to orchestrate a multi-system rejuvenation. This therapy could also signal a shift from treating diseases of aging to targeting aging itself. I mean, that's the holy grail, right? Instead of patching up heart disease, arthritis, or dementia after they occur, we could maintain youthful resilience and prevent those diseases from ever taking hold. At the same time, the study does underscore how far we still have to go. Researchers have to decipher whether exosomes alone can reproduce the full effect. They need to map exactly which tissues are not affected yet and how to make it affect those. A lot to be done. So anyway, there you have it. Gene hack stem cells that make monkeys younger. The FOXO3 mutation keeps all these cells anti-aging machinery switched on. Their exosomes act like tiny FedEx packages delivering youthful potions. And when injected bi-weekly, they reverse biological age across multiple organs. So it's pretty incredible. It's a little scary. It's really fun. And it's just the beginning. But is this therapy coming to a clinic near you tomorrow? No, but the study does prove that systemic age reversal in primates is possible and safe so far. For longevity enthusiasts, that's a big deal. For ethicists, regulators, and anyone worried about monkey uprisings, there's still a lot to discuss. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe, and comment below with your biggest hopes or fears about gene editing. And if you wanna go deeper, check out our previous episodes on limb regrowth. And for exclusive content like our new interview, I just posted it with Sho Joseph Ozaki, founder of the Public Longevity Group. We had a great conversation about the data insights that he's gathering on public perception in the longevity space. So join our Patreon today for those exclusive interviews. And on that note, I'm Emmett Short. This is Longevity Science News. Stay young.